Today I'm going to be bringing you a Unity tutorial on how to start game development with a first person controller, a terrain, some grass or trees and uh, add some textures into the map. I'm going to be going through very basic so if you're completely new to game development this is the video for you. If you have a little bit of experience with it you might learn one or two things so I recommend you stay in touch. Apologise in advance but I am um, recovering from a cold so I do have a bit of a um, funny voice. So here, this is essentially, don't, I'm about to go through everything really, really quickly. You don't have to remember it. You'll just get a rough idea. So basically, this is your hierarchy. This is where everything in your game will go. This is your project. This is where all your standard assets go, or your assets, your models, your characters, your scripts, your sounds, everything that you want to put into the game. Your console will, or okay, basically my unit just crashed, but here we go. Uh, when you start your game, you're going to have a console over here. You're going to have your inspector, this is where you can edit all of your uh, objects in your hierarchy or scene. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. And this is your actual game, so this is what you'll see when you've built the game. This is your scene here. Uh, let's just move console down here because it's usually down there. Uh, and your scene is basically your game. So let's just get started straight away. The first thing we're going to do is, I just made a little notes, uh, we're going to create a terrain. So we, most people make planes, but personally create terrain is definitely the best tool. Uh, so you just want to go up there, terrain, create terrain. Then we're going to go up to terrain, and we're going to click set resolution. We're going to set it to about 500 by 500, because that's a... 2000 is a very big map, it's like Fallout. You can, terrain height doesn't really matter, so we'll set the resolution. If you right click, you can look around. And if you use WSD keys, you can actually fly around um, your world, or your scene, or your game. And you can actually see in a good first person perspective on what, what it's looking like. Uh, this is a new feature to Unity 4.0. If you click Shift, you can like sprint, you could say. Uh, so yeah, I highly recommend you get Unity 4.0 if you don't already have it. So now we see we have terrain in the hierarchy and the standard assets. We still don't have terrain because it's part of the hierarchy automatically. If we click on terrain, uh, it's going to come up with this options in the inspector window. Now if we just select a normal brush and then the height tool, we can raise or lower some ground. So we're going to make a bit of a terrain here, standard 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 assets so there we go standard hills we got there now if you want to remove hills that you've put you click shift and you click and it'll just gradually remove all the hills that you've put in the map so as you can see we now have a little bit of a pathway between this little gorged area so we might just make a bit of a valley here just to add this now as you can see the map right now isn't looking very good as you can see it's got no textures on it so what we're going to do is we're going to add in a texture. So I'm just going to go into my library, pictures, uh, textures. I just have a small folder here. None of the text is really relevant to the map, but it'll still work. So here we have standard assets. We're going to create a new folder, create folder, and we're going to call it textures. We're then going to click and drag a texture. Here we're going to use tiles. We're going to put it in the textures folder. We're going to use concrete as well. I'm going to put it in the texture folder. We now have these in the standard assets, and we can import them to our scene. If we open the textures folder, we have concrete floor, compressed, you can change its size file. So if you're developing for Android games, you want to compress it as much as you can without losing quality. Now we're going to go into the little paint tool here, edit textures, add texture, select, we'll select concrete floor, and click exit. We're going to change the size 1 to 1, you can change these as much as you want. But 1 to 1 is probably the best because it will get the texture looking nice and small. If we have 15 to 15, they'll be much bigger and they will not look like small tiles they look absolutely massive and they will not match first person controllers height and size so as you can see here the hills are all different color and as you can see the texture is also like squashed up the hillside so we're going to edit textures add texture select and we're going to make the hills made out of concrete you can leave these at 15 by 15 because they're so big so we're going to select here again just the little brush tool there and we can actually just paint along Ooh, you have to select the concrete sorry you just paint along the hillside, and as you can see, you're getting a nice black hill right here. I'll just quickly go over some of these using the WASD with a right click again. Just click and drag, and as you can see, we've now got a bit of dark hills. You can go around the back, but never, no one's ever going to see that. So you've always got to think about saving time and just doing the bits that your first person character will see. Alright, okay, so now we have a bit more of a, of a map going on here. Uh, I think we're going to go insert some plants. Let me check my notes. Um, actually, no, yeah, that's what we'll do. We've got to import a skybox. Now, as you can see, the sky right now is grey. If we look in the game, we can see we have a little bit of this, but the sky is blue. 
it doesn't look very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to import an asset. Now, if you remember this, you'll be laughing because you can already game develop. So you're going to go into assets and you're going to import package or import new asset. Import new asset just imports a file that you have on your computer, a model, a script, a text, or anything you want. Then we're going to go down to skyboxes. It will decompress the package. This is already pre-built into Unity, this particular package. And we can just click import. And it'll import it to your standard assets area. So we'll just let that decompress. Once we've done that, we can put on a nice, beautiful, sunny sky to make it look a bit more realistic. Right, okay, as you can see under the standard assets, we now have skyboxes. Now, if we go up to edit, render settings, get used to that. So, edit and render settings. Boom. you got fog and you got ambient light. So, if you want a really dark map, just change it to dark. If you want a light map, change it to white. So, we'll leave it all white right now so we can see what we're doing. Skybox material. We click this little circle. And we actually select overcast, moonshine, whatever one you want. There's sunny. There's overcast. Actually, let's use that overcast. That's quite nice. Right, okay, so we're going to use overcast. Bit of clouds. You can make your own ones, uh, but that'll be in a different tutorial. This is just very basic stuff that's going on here with standard assets. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is, another glance at my notes, is we're going to import some new assets. So go up to assets, import package, and we can import... I'm just trying to think. Character controller, actually. We'll import character controller. So we click on character controller. This will be our first person controller, third person controller, and any other controller you want to use. Uh, this will be for mobile as well, so you get different different assets types for each. They're called prefabs, basically. Prefabs is. You can see we now have our character controllers in here. Prefab is basically something that's pre built that you can put into the game. Uh, it involves you no know, scripting. Uh, no matter what. Basically, it just saves a lot of time because you end up scripting the same thing unless you want to make your own first-person controller. You understand that more when you get into more programming. So here we have a first-person controller, third-person controller. We're going to click and drag the first-person controller into the hierarchy, not the scene. Some errors can happen then, so we're just going to put it, always put it straight into the hierarchy, then the scene. If you just have a normal model, I recommend you just click and drag it into the scene where you want it to go. Now, under the first-person controller, you can see it already has a main camera, so the one that comes with the map, as soon as you start, just delete that. If you click on the first person controller and click F on the scene, first person controller F, it will actually just focus straight into this guy. Or you can just click and double click on top of him. Now if we use uh, QWERTY, or QWERT, uh, you can actually change all these. So you can click click and drag, moving across. You got, that, sorry, that's pan. This is to move. You've got the X, Y, and Z axis. Here you've got your rotation. And of course you've got your scale afterwards as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our guy closer to the actual map. So we can actually select the game and we can see whereabouts he is. So we're going to move him much closer. And then we're going to move him across on the x-axis. And then we can go fly over. Just click F again. We'll focus right onto the guy. We click red. And as you can see, we can't even see where he is anymore. So we'll go look in the view of our game. Move the character back. And we'll just get him lined up nicely here. So as you can see right now he's kind of floating in the air. So always look at your character. He, If we click play right now it will work and he will just fall. So if I move up, let's move this thing across, we click play. You'll see he'll just fall to the floor. There you go, no problem and it's working. So we actually don't want him just to fall to the floor because it doesn't look very professional. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the nice... Look, just just look at his capsule. You make sure he's not like that because it won't work. He'll probably fall through the map and it'll just look like that. You just want to put him either just above the ground so he falls a little bit. Just just a little bit. And that'll give the character a nice little bounce when he spawns into the map. Uh, another thing that I think I'm going to cover is just make sure I got this right order. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how to import some plants into the map. Now, I've already showed you how to import some textures. It's pretty much the exact same thing. We go back into the inspector window, and we go on to, uh, we just double click terrain, well we've zoomed out, so let's go, let's, let's, sorry, bear with me, there we go, so if we're on terrain, uh, we'll go click on the plants, we'll click on a little round plant, edit details, add grass texture, now as you can see right now we don't have any, so if I click over here, you can see we've just got all these, so you have to import a correct grass texture. So we're going to go away and do that. 
Okay, and the way we do that is we just go find our grass textures. Here we have two Adobe Photoshop files. Uh, and we just click and drag them straight into our assets. Now, here we have two grasses. We're going to move them straight into our textures just to make things nice and easy. That's the main problem you ever have with game development is making sure everything's nice and easy to access so you don't get confused. So if you keep everything tidy at the start, it'll always be nice and tidy. So if we go on to frame again. We click this guy because we want to, want to spread it around. Add grass texture. Select our grass. So we're going to use this one here. You can use that one either. And you want to make sure it's not a billboard effect because billboard effects aren't very good. Uh, so you want to untick billboard because I don't like billboard personally. Uh, it doesn't look very good and I'm going to change colour as well. Actually, you know what, let's just be unique. I'm going to put on some nice purple grass into the map. Purple and green, why not? We'll click add and as you can see down here we've got this. So we put that there, there, there and there. We just click. So they're in our billboard right now, as you can see, they're just like lying against ground like that. But if we go into edit details, edit, we scroll down a little bit. We'll click billboard and click apply. As you can see, they come up from the ground a bit. But if we go into game, and we click play, you'll see that as we turn around, they follow us. They are moving, so they are looking like grass. But as you can see, it, they're kind of not too realistic so if we remove the billboard effect I'm actually not sure if I might might be giving my bad advice here let me just click that and apply let's see what it's like without it ah you see personally I prefer that I prefer the grass not moving at all and it's just like the 2D but I suppose you've all got your own preferences now you know what to do if you want to choose yourself um, so basically that's a good start into Unity Tutorial number one complete, you don't need to know any scripting language for this, but for future tutorials you will need to or I'll be providing them in the description. Thanks a lot for watching the video, be sure to like and subscribe and check out the other Unity tutorials I have, even some gameplay of the new game I'm developing on Unity called Replacement. Check out the website, links in the description, thanks a lot guys.